Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special episode of the show. Uh, we've got Beaujolais Day, or uh, it's supposed to be what? The new Beaujolais is here? The Beaujolais Nouveau is here? Whatever. Yeah, I was reading a little Beaujolais Nouveau write up. Um, still looks like I might be pegging out the sound, so I'll talk a little bit lower, maybe. Okay. So um, I'll have some pictures up. Actually, we'll take some pictures live right now. Uh, we've got the setup going, and it looks like I've got everything working wonderfully. Um, I'm online. I'm, I'm going right to Ustream. I'm recording on the computer. I'm recording on Ustream. So, um, you know, it, it, life is good right now on what's going on here. Now, if you're watching right now and you've got a Skype account and you want to Skype in, maybe you've bought the Beaujolais Nouveau already and you want to taste with me, come on in. Come on, come on by. Call. I've got the whole thing set up so we can do multi-video chat. Uh, i got a day pass for that, so we're good to go. Um, what am I doing here? I'm supposed to take a picture, right? So I'm going to tweet and take a picture. I got So, um, all right, so it's Beaujolais Nouveau Day. Uh, so what we got going on here is um, I've got three wines, three Beaujolais. Now, uh, as, far as, the, as far as for the uh, Nouveau Day, Oh, yeah, it's kind of weird. I've got a whole freaking studio here now. I'm so excited I've got this stuff working finally. The only thing I don't have going is Skype yet, but if you call me, that might be pretty darn cool. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's try to get wine twits on. We'll give him a little, give him a little nudge on Twitter. There we go. All right, so um, I'm going to take a quick picture of the setup here from here. I took some uh, with my regular camera, my new camera, so I want some high-def stuff. Oh, yeah, I don't really need to turn this on, but we're going to start the timer. Um, so I'm going to take a picture of the setup. I'm going to tweet it just so you get an idea of what how things are looking here. The studio... The live, no, not the love, the live studio. And kind of like my buddies, Gary, doing his stuff, or used to do his stuff, and uh, my No Agenda guys. It's all live, no editing. Just The thing is going to be up tomorrow, just like this is, from hello, everybody, to how I end it. So if it's an hour long, it's an hour long. Hopefully, I'll, I'm planning to be done by 5 o'clock because I have to go to something after this. Um, so uh, we've got that. So we've got a little bit. So we're not got nothing interesting going on right now. But anyway, um, so I've been spending the past, I don't know, let's see, I've been broadcasting for how long does it say here? 40 minutes. I've been broadcasting for about 40 minutes, really just to get make sure the setup is stable doing some stuff, uh, getting all my other things going on. But, um, uh-oh, who who tweeted back? Can you link me? I have five minutes before I need to head to New York. URL, please. Boom. Hold on. Tweets. Boom. You stream right there. Skype name. Elite Wine. Um, anyway, so Wine Twist heading over to New York. So let's get the let's get the uh, tag there. I'm gonna get the little take the photo. Bam! I got studio light. I'm really psyched about that. Uh, I've got the eyeglasses thing going on. We're gonna get the studio light here. Here's my studio light. And then yeah, use. We're gonna take a couple pictures here. 
Come on, save. And then uh, I've got, um, take another picture. Come on. There is a way to do more than one. Well, let's just do this. Yeah, there you go. I can get the whole studio. Okay, we're going to use that. And we're going to upload that. Um, come on. Use. So uh, we've got this going on. Yeah, I still think I'm a little bit too loud on that. So I'm kind of hearing a little distortion in the earpiece. Really? Did you freaking reset on me, phone? Way to go. So, uh, yeah, I still have old school 3GS. I don't know why I'm looking at the light. Old school 3GS. And we've got that going on. It's the sound. Let's turn that down just a tad. Just a tad turn that down. Because in the um, – if the picture actually worked – there we go. Um, if the picture actually worked, then um, you're going to see this thing over – well, from my perspective, it's over there. But from your perspective, it was probably there. Anyway, um, on the left side of the of the computer screen, there's uh, what's called the Flash Media Live Encoder. Um, that's from Adobe Systems. That's what's allowing me to send all the stuff as a high quality feed to Ustream. Now I'm not using high def, and the reason I'm not using high def is because if you're calling me on Skype, high def is being wasted. Um, if I do call recorder on 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 that, but you know, I, since I'm not really in Skype, I probably should have just done all high def. It's okay. 640 by 360 is just fine. Uh, this is Ustream broadcast. I'm recording on Ustream. I'm recording on the computer, so I've got backup, and we look like we're doing pretty well with that. Um, the sound looks like it's going pretty well, and I know the sound was coming through here. So we've got uh, I've got Cam Twist that's going on. I got eyeglasses, which you couldn't really see because I didn't have the window open. That allows me to adjust uh, a lot of stuff with it. I can even zoom in a little bit, but I don't really need to. Um, I don't care if you can see all this back here. You always see it anyway. Um, I am using the iMac, as the picture probably showed. Man, the phone is just, really? Uh, I'm using the iMac. And the reason I'm using the iMac to broadcast is that uh, I have found that um, even though, I guess, technically both the MacBook Pro and the iMac have the same high def face, you know, 720p high def FaceTime camera, the quality from this is much better. Hello, send a contact request. Oh, looks like I got my first Skype. Stephen Gilberg, I bet you this is, we'll accept this wine twits. So um, we've got that going on. See if, uh, see if that thing sent, did it send it? Now I'm all confused trying to figure out which, which uh, pad to use. Okay, I've accepted it, and they're going to call me. No, it doesn't look like it sent it. So let's see if we can send it again. But anyway, so we've got that. Um, I've got Skype going. I've got uh, Line in, which is the thing that's allowing the, um, which is allowing the whole audio to go from this all the way out to Ustream, um, also for Skype. So we've got that going on, and... Maybe I'll post the picture later. I've took a bunch of pictures of the studio, but um, we'll do that. How do I hear you on Ustream? Okay, let's see. Um, is the sound not working? Not working. Let's see. Let's check my sound over here. I hear myself through the monitor. Okay, very low. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then that means I was, I wasn't uh, having everything all the way up. All right, let's crank it up a bit. How is this, uh, Stephen? Much better. All right, let's crank it up a bit. How is this, uh, Stephen? Much better. All right, cool. I just didn't want to get too much into the red on the monitor there. Uh, now let's get through the <laughs> – now we've got echoes going on. All right, so um, 
let's get started. I've got uh, I've got Stephen watching on. Uh, I got Wine Twits watching on uh, UStream. If you know anyone else, go ahead and let them know. And uh, let's just get going here. All right. So first, um, the whole point of today is is the whole George de Bouf, Well, not George de Bouf, but Beaujolais Nouveau. Now, George de Bouf didn't start it. But it's the one that popularized it. He, you know, he went, "Hey, man, we can make some money off of this because this is it's a money, it's a, it's a revenue generating thing for these guys where they're going to get." Um, have, oh, hearing? Are you still hearing the echo? It should be d- gone now because I turned off the laptop uh, speaker. Um, the uh, uh, what should we call it? So anyway, you know, running a um, cool running a uh, a winery is expensive. So that you know, to get some cash flow in really quick right after the harvest, um, they they realized that you know they could kind of market this. Now this was nothing. This isn't brand new. I mean, they were doing this for a little while. Um, I believe it started. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the mention. Um, it started in. Uh, no, it started. Dang it! I don't think they have an exact year here on on the. Book of Knowledge, a, a.k.a. Um, uh, Wikipedia. But anyway, so uh, they, they would do it for a while. And uh, it says, Beaujolais always made a vin de l'année to celebrate the end of harvest. No, so this is where we have our, our Thanksgiving connection. So we have the harvest. Uh, next week, I'm going to have my Thanksgiving special. I've got my friend Ceci uh, setting up some wines for me when I, come, uh, when I come by for the Beaujolais tasting tonight at her wine shop. Um, she's getting me set up for Thanksgiving wines and one of them is going to be kind of cool. Um, I hope so. Anyway, so, uh, so the end of harvest and, uh, World War II, um, all the way up to World War II, basically this was a, uh, a local thing. It's kind of like, you know, that, that, uh, German sparkling wine sect that nobody drinks outside of Germany. Um, it's like local consumption only. So that's, that's what Beaujolais Nouveau was really for a while. Um, and then in 30, 1937, the AOC, the Beaujolais AOC was established, and what happened was that it said that you couldn't sell the wine prior to December 15th. Um, so they kind of screwed everything because they were releasing this wine in November. So um, they decided to, uh, uh, in 19, see, 1951, they relaxed the rules, so it allowed them to set a 15th of November uh, release date for uh, Beaujolais Nouveau. And then, uh, like I said, George Booth, he, he kind of said, hey, man, we can make some money off of this, so let's, let's do that. Um, so they decided to really market it, and that's where, you know, it's become more of a global thing. So we've got Beaujolais Nouveau. Now, this is not, this is not, uh, this is not going to be like your top, top, top quality wine, but, um, you know, it's, it's very young wine. It's only been, it's only about six to eight weeks old, depending on how it harvests. Now, a few things about this. They have to harvest by hand. There's no mechanical harvesting. Um, uh, they do um, uh, uh, carbonic maceration. It's whole, whole berry fermentation. Um, so you're, you're, you're being a little more gentle with it. You're getting more of the fruit. You're not, you're, you're going to get, you're not going to get, get as much tannins from these. So it's going to be very light drinking wine. Uh, I hate to say it's sweet, but it's fruity. Um, it's going to be a very fruit forward wine. It's not, not only is it called a sweet wine. We're not talking white Zinfandel sweet or, or, you know, blush wine sweet. We're talking, you know, more of a fruity wine. Um, and then it's pasteurized and that's so that we don't get the malolactic fermentation. The malolactic is that is, um, where you're getting the, the, uh, uh, acidic, you know, the apple to, um, milk fermentation, mallow lactic. That's what it stands for. Um, that's why you get those apple flavors or you'll get those creamy dairy flavors because those are, those are the acids that's happening or the fermentation that's happening. Um, so they prevent that and then it's ready to drink six to eight weeks after harvest. So um, let's see, it's supposedly 49 million liters that citation needed. So um, basically a buttload of wine is, is produced. Um, and then uh, it, this can be kind of an indicator of what the vintage is going to be like. So you have your Beaujolais village or village, and then you have your crew, bro- crew Beaujolais, um, so, which we have here. Uh, these two wines are crew Beaujolais. So we'll talk about those in a second. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got, so this is the George Booth, you know, the guy that's basically popularized everything. 
Um, and I could have bought some of the other, there was like another Beaujolais Nouveau at the store. Um, funny story, I, I get the specs, um, I get there about 1230-ish. Yeah, I really had intended to get there around 10, 1030, maybe a little earlier or maybe a little later to, to, to get it. And um, I walk in at 1230 and said the truck just showed up. So I don't know if that was a mistake or that was intended. But anyway, luckily, uh, I didn't get there too early. So this is the Okoy 2011. Man, that looks pretty good with the light. Uh, George DeBoof, Beaujolais and DeVoe. Um, bought this at Specs, and I bought it for $8.99, $8.89. Uh, now, that includes my – I believe that includes my 5% discount for paying cash. Uh, it was $8.99, I think, at the actual register. All right, so let's see how it let's, let's uh, go ahead and start the uh, the smell. First, let's look at the color. Um, it's very very you know purplish. Um, it doesn't have like it's not a deep red. It's not a not a garnet. It's very purpley. Let's check out the uh, viscosity. Let's look at the legs. Legs are you know it, it's it, legs aren't too bad. Let's really get it circling around that glass there. Yeah, I mean, the, the the legs, depending on what part of the glass I'm looking at, are either non-existent or – there they go. But they they're, they're, they go down really quickly. And, again, remember, legs don't really tell you the quality of the wine, just so you, so that you know. It, it used to be everyone thought, oh, it's, you know, certain legs meant better quality. Um, you know, it really is, is just partially an indicator of alcohol. 12.5% um, alcohol on it. Um, otherwise, you know, just a nice purple color. Um, very, really looks very much like grape juice, which, you know, it is. I mean, technically. All right, we're going to smell this. A very young wine. Now, let me tell you, man, I really feel like I just walked into the barrel room of, of any winery um, because you smell the grapiness, the fruitiness. When I, when I was in France, especially, I mean, I, I kind of smelled it a little bit when I was in uh, the Texas Hill Country, but man, I, I feel like I'm back in France. I mean, I literally feel like I am walking in the barrel rooms and, and smelling the wine in the barrel, you know, that, that's, that was harvested a year ago, okay? You're, you're getting those types of really, really heavy fruit forward smells. Now, partially because I, I probably got a little bit um, pre-whatever, Pre, uh, not prejudged, but I was I was reading the whole thing about Beaujolais Nouveau because hadn't really read it read it in a while, uh, and blueberry paint kind of stuck out. Um, I was like, really blueberries? I'm going to smell or taste blueberries out of this? I don't remember that, but um, you know, I kind of do get that blueberry thing. You know, maybe it was that power of suggestion. But man, it honestly, if you've never been to a winery. Um, and gone into the barrel room and smell and smelling the wine fermentating, uh, going through fermentation, uh, fermenting. There you go, not fermentating. Fermenting. Man, it really smells like that. Uh, let's see how it tastes. Again. This is a very light wine. Um, it's supposed to be. This is something that you 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 probably really need to put with food. I mean, totally could be as intended, you know, harvest type of wine. So you're while the French don't necessarily have Thanksgiving or harvest type of stuff like we do in the United States. I mean, the type of foods that you are going to be um, doing with this is uh, uh, similar. I mean, it, it's definitely going to go with turkey. I mean, Beaujolais in general, the Gamay grape, by the way, that's, that's the grape that's used. It's Gamay, G-A-M-A-Y. Um, it is effectively the only grape, only red grape grown in Beaujolais. Not quite. There's a, a small percentage of other grapes grown. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but the Gamay grape is what makes this a very light grape. Um, and it, it's it's not going to be he you're not going to get really heavy wines out of it. You're going to get kind of silky, and maybe even in, uh, when you get to the higher quality wines, a little bit elegant. But um, you know, this is something I can go with with uh, uh, lighter meats like turkey. Uh, you can even put it with chicken, you know, pork, turkey, um, duck. You know, the French love 
Marines love duck. <laughs> they, they, they have it all the time, it seems like, when I was over there. Um, so this is a wine that easily can go with anything like that. Man, I just cannot get over the, the bouquet. Um, and just it makes me feel like I'm, I'm back in Bordeaux. Now, I get a bit of cola. It feels like there's a little bit of carbonation to it. And not, not really, but, but I get that kind of blueberry cola-like aspect. Like I said, it's not a sugary sweet wine. Um, you get the fruit. It's totally fruit forward. I mean, I, I get nothing vegetal out of this. Well, maybe I get a little, a little bit of spice to it. Um, but nothing like, you know, getting uh, a huge vegetal or mineral component. Um, but whole, totally fruit forward. I mean, it's a $9 bottle of wine. Uh, Nouveau's are, are, are going to be under $10 for the most part. I've almost bought, just, just, for the, just to be curious, I almost bought um, Nouveau from 2009, so two years ago, and I thought about using that as a comparison. I also thought about going strictly with uh, Debouf and doing his Nouveau and then a couple of the, then his Village and then his, one of his crew, um, and I decided to, to not do that instead of making it – instead of doing it as one brand, I decided to do it as uh, let's, do, let's do the Nouveau and then we'll do two other crews. Anyway – um, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, you're going to find these things for under $10. Um, <clears throat> it's meant to be easy drinking. You drink, you don't hold on to this. This is not something you're going to sell her. This is something that you want to have now or like Thanksgiving, you know, with, within, within a few weeks, you don't want to really want to be even waiting. I mean, you, have, you could probably wait till March next year, but this is not something you're going to hold on to for 10 years and be like, Oh, it's going to get significantly better. This is, you know, it's it's meant to be drunk right now, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We have to remember as Americans that not everybody in the world thinks that you need to hold on to wine for 50 years, or I'm sorry, for for 10 years just to be the right time to drink it. Um, some people look at us kind of funny when we do that. I'm used to getting people looking at me funny anyway. So, um, you know, again, it's I'll recommend buying it. Uh, points wise, you know, it's. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the wine. I don't think there's anything uh, – it's not, it's not uh, disjointed. It's not unbalanced. Um, it's tasty, and that's the bottom line. Do, do you like it? Is it tasty? I think it is. And I'll, I'll go with um, – I don't know. A, um, I'll go with a 87. I think I bumped it up a point just because it's Nouveau Day. I probably would have given it an A6, but A7, A you know. Um, you know, recommend buying it. And honestly, um, this is the most well-known. You can't, you're not going to go wrong with buying this particular brand of Beaujolais Nouveau. You won't go wrong with it at all. You shouldn't. All right. So um, let's move on. Hopefully, uh, let's, let's check that. Let's see if there's a. Let's check that. Boom, boom, boom. Actually, I'm going to reload that just because, just because I can. Man, there's that many tweets going on. All right. Um, and then, of course, yeah, go away. Um, and then, of course, I have ads on here. Do I get part of that revenue uh, you stream? No, I know I don't. All right, so let's move on. Um, this I bought because, well, it's a crew. Um, one thing, though, uh, and, and Specs is Specs is a pretty good, pretty good retailer, um, but I was really disappointed in their selection of Beaujolais, and, and this is something I think that, that happens. Beaujolais is considered um, – people a lot of times don't think Beaujolais really has good wine. They, all they remember is Nouveau. That's all they think about. All I'm going to do is buy it in November, and your average person is kind of like, yeah, Beaujolais, that's that fruity wine that I only drink on Thanksgiving. Okay? Well, there's, there's other Beaujolais, and, and, I, and I, admit, I don't drink a lot of Beaujolais. Uh, I've only had maybe a couple other ones other than Nouveau's. Um, but let's, I want to do this uh, with the crew. So um, I was really disappointed, though, that they didn't have a, a really big selection. 
I really wish they'd had a better selection. I think I had a choice of these two, a DeBoof. I think that was it for crew. Maybe one more. Um, yeah, there was one more crew that I could have. So the four crews and then maybe another like three or four village um, or villages. And then, um, and then of course, this Nouveau. And then, like I said, it was like a couple from 2009. And I was like, maybe not. All right. So this is the 2009, speaking of that, Chateau de Rossiers, Rossier, I don't know. Um, this is in the uh, AOC, re, I mean, I probably should have really looked at how to pronounce these things. Um, Regine, I don't know if Ceci had to pronounce this stuff. Um, anyway, uh, this is one of the, one of the um, uh, crews in Beaujolais. Uh, this is the newest of the uh, 10 uh, Grand Cru, or not Grand, not Grand Cru, but 10 crews in Beaujolais. There's only 10. This, is, uh, this was created, I think, in 88. Let's go to their web page real quick. Um, actually, it's going to be under here because I need to go there. Uh, 1988, yes. 1988 was when this uh, when this AOC, when this crew was, uh, as they put it, graduated from being a Beaujolais village. Um, do mean a crew Beaujolais? Uh, now, where this is in, in Beaujolais, it's, uh, if I remember right, it's kind of like on the southern. This is, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is kind of in the middle of, uh, of, all, the, of all the crews. Um, it's not a very small, it looks like it's a fairly decent sized one. But it's uh, um, it's kind of somewhat in the middle, of the western side of where all the uh, all the crews are. So just looking at the map, it kind of makes sense that it probably should have become a crew at some point. Um, but there's nothing to the to the west of it. I'm sorry, nothing to the west of it other than just uh, Beaujolais Village. So you know, it's at the edge of that. But it's definitely surrounded by a couple other things on on the other sides. All right, so. First of all, let's take a look at the color. Now, this is not purple grape type of color. It's more of, it just looks more like a traditional red. Um, I'm wondering how this new light makes it look. But, um, you know, it's more of a traditional red. Uh, it's not as light. Um, I actually, it's hard to see my hands through it. Uh, as far as viscosity, uh, you know, the legs are actually a little bit smaller. Again, um, this shouldn't be a very high alcoholic wine. But it's one of the things you're supposed to look at, you know, is it low, high, medium viscosity? And I'd say it's kind of low viscosity. Uh, it is a, looks like a 13.5% uh, alcohol. Let's go ahead and smell it. Now, see, completely different here. Now, this smells like an old world wine. I've got kind of that, that not, not heavy barnyard, but you get that minerality earthiness. Um, more earthy than barnyard, okay, because um, uh, barnyard a lot of times I think it's just used to, 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 to talk about earthiness, but it's more earthy. And now I'm getting kind of that smoke, almost stink bomb type of, of uh, not really, you know, smoke. Yeah, a little stink bomb. The fruit's there. It's a little bit muted. Um, not getting the blueberry that I got off of the Nouveau. Oh, by the way, uh, the Fessy is twelve ninety nine. Maybe it was a little bit. Maybe it was actually thirteen something. I think it was actually thirteen something. But twelve ninety nine. Um, twelve ninety nine from Specs. More of a strawberry uh, fruit flavor, but really mostly mostly um, earthiness and smokiness coming off the nose. So a little bit. A little bit heavier wine, but still very light. More acid to it 
than the than the nouveau. The you know the nouveau is very low tannins, if any, very low acid. Again, very light drinking. Um, this one has a lot more acid to it, but I feel like the acid's kind of not focused. Um, now, granted, I'm not gonna, I'm not expecting like Sauvignon Blanc, you know, very razor sharp acidity, um, but the acid feels a little bit kind of spread out. And when I when I drank it, I got like it's this whiff of chocolate as I was as I was getting the wine in my mouth. You know, getting that uh, kind of chocolate covered chocolate covered strawberry. That's kind of what I was getting off of that. Um, pretty tasty. Um, I kind of feel the acid, and 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 honestly, it feels kind of more of like the alcohol isn't contained. It it, it needs it, it needs a little more structure or, con, or containment to it. Not a bad wine. Um, so that's just to justify the fact that it sounds like I'm bashing it when I, when I'm really not. I'm just I think I'm just being overly critical. Uh, I'm not going to be giving it a bad score, let's put it that way. I think it's getting a little bit better um, as I'm drinking it. Again, this is, you know, another Gamay grape, but it's definitely more mature. It's got a little more structure to it. Um, I feel like I feel like the flavors are are more mature. Uh, you've got uh, a little bit of that chocolate, a little bit of that strawberry. Um, again, the acid. I think if you're pairing this, I think this definitely needs to be with food. You're putting it with your turkey dinner. You're putting it with um, uh, a lighter fare beef, um, or even or even uh, like like a, a meatier fish, like a salmon um, or a tuna. It's really going to interact very well with the protein. Uh, or and then with uh, any type of sauces, any any type of uh, uh, milk-based sauces, or, or you know creamy sauces or cheeses is going to really I think interact um, the the acidity. I mean my mouth is watering from the acidity. Part of it's because I'm talking about food, but I, I feel like I need to eat something. So if it, like I said, the acid isn't as as focused as I've had from say like a Sauvignon Blanc, but it's it's very I say moderate in acid. I, I mean, I'm really medium to medium high acid because I'm really salivating. I, I really want to like bite into a big hunk of cheese just to kind of counteract that. And now the nose is calming down a little bit. I'm getting less of the stink bomb aspect, you know, which really to me that just means, you know, the little bit of sulfur is just blowing off. Um, the little little bit of sulfur in the wine is just kind of blowing off. Wow, just there, I I got kind of that. Just and it's my it's a little bit of sulfur, but for like a, a split second uh, on the bouquet, and after I poured some more wine, um, I got like I felt like I was like at the beach, like smell of not the ocean, like the sea salt. But smell of, um, I guess, the seaweed that would be on on the beach. Not exactly a pleasant smell. Let's just put it that way. Um, but interesting, you know. Yeah, it's kind of there. It's kind of that. Um, God, I really hate to use these descriptions. But and again, it's not not an unpleasant smell. But but you get that, you know, you you. You're near the ocean and not rotten fish. That's why I really don't want to use that term. But you're getting that that type of you know sea type of you know you, you, you smell fish. But again, not the uh, you know, like I don't like fish and I don't like the fishy smells. Re like when Sam is being cooked, sometimes it just fills up the restaurant and I'm, I'm like gag reflex. Okay, it's not like that. 
but I do get kind of an ocean, like I'm being at the ocean, all the smells rolled into one thing. Um, but it, it's, it's subtle. It's not overpowering. And I think I'm kind of getting a little used to the acid. It doesn't feel as spread out, but it's still not super focused. It's good wine. I think it's, again, I think it's very similar to the, the booth as far as, not similar, as far as score-wise. I think it's, it's going to be right in that same range. Um, I'd give it an 87. I don't think it's uh, a bad wine. I think, uh, I think it's actually pretty decent, but I really think that I need to have food with this, okay? Um, you know, and I, I, to me, more cheeses. Uh, having having um, dairy and having lighter, you know, this I, I'm not going to have a porterhouse steak with this thing. Um, maybe a pork chop, maybe you know turkey, maybe duck, you know, lighter stuff. And like I said, your your meatier fishes like tuna and salmon. All right, next one. Now this one. All right, so. I don't want to say funny story, but a little story about this one, so let's get on to this. This is the 2005 Chateau de la Chaise from Bruley, okay, bought this at Specs for $14.19, uh, sorry, $14.13, $14.13. Now, now I got the information out of the way. This wine was actually behind a couple wines on the same shelf, you know, in the same row as the 2008 vintage. Matter of fact, it was the only 2005. Methinks somebody was intentionally hiding it. Now, I bought this one over the 2008 because 2005 in France in general was, you know, a, a, a vintage of, of the decade, if not a vintage of a century type of vintage. And you know, Bordeaux especially, but I also know that Burgundy 2005 was a pretty good vintage. Uh, remember, this is part of Burgundy. Granted, it's, it's kind of detached and a little bit to the south, but 2005 in general in France was a, was a good vintage. And nothing against 2008, but, you know, it's one of those things like 2005. And the bottle was completely different. This is kind of like a little squat bottle. It's got this little ridge around here. Um, the, the 2008 looks like this bottle. Somewhat, I mean, it's got, you know, you know, the same burgundy type of, you know, capsule here and all that, but it, it looked different. So I thought, why not? Let's buy it. And I don't know if it was supposed to be more expensive or less expensive than the 2008, but they charged me 2008 price for it, or the same price as the 2008s. So I was also going to be interested to see if they charged me something different for it. All right, so color. Now, this is a lighter Definitely lighter. Okay. Now, here's something to, again to remember about red wines. Red wines uh, get lighter with age, and white wines get you know darker or more golden and brown with age. Um, so this is a six-year-old wine. Um, age may be playing a little bit into this. If this was say, if this was you know, if I was looking at 2009, it might be darker. So, um, but it definitely is a a lighter wine. Oh, let's talk about the Chateau real quick. Um, like I said, it's in the Bruley, uh Appalachian. Now, um, one thing to know, there's, there's the Bruley and the, uh, the Cote de Bruley. Now, the Cote de Bruley is inside the Bruley, so they're considered two separate Appalachians or AOCs, okay? Um, anyway, the Chateau is um, near Odinus, Odinus uh, in Beaujolais. And uh, see, the country's best is, is breath. The country's best known uh, brulee. Uh, and we'll just I'll just go through the history. The most elegant of wines from the largest of ten individual vineyard appellations in the Beaujolais district, producing the finest Beaujolais. Yeah, it sounds like marketing's fluff. Uh, magnificent estate was designed in 1676 by the art by the architects of the Versailles. Um, blah 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 blah. Okay. Owned by the Marquis de Russi de Sales. Um, there you go. Okay. Anyway, uh, this uh, the, the wine has greater body and longer life than most Brulee. And I had read this before I bought it, and that's and about Brulee, but but about this wine, 
Um, and that's why I went ahead and, and said, well, we'll do 2005. Let's, let's see you know, how it aged. All right, so we have the color. I mean, it's, it's even got a little bit of like brick color. It's a little bit lighter. Um, I can totally see my hands through it. Viscosity, very low viscosity, 13% uh, alcohol, so, you know, whatever. Let's uh, go ahead and smell it. Now this is the kind of nose I like. Now you get the barnyard. Very earthy. You know, a tad of stink bomb to it. Again, it might be sulfur blowing off. But yeah, very mineral, earthy nose. As a matter of fact, fruit-wise, vegetal-wise, I get nothing out of it. So, um... Yeah, very, very, you know, earthiness. Yeah, it really looks, you know, you probably, it probably looks just as dark as the other ones. But anyway, so let's, uh, let's see how it tastes. You know, I think, you know, the, well, the sunlight's going down. So, um, you know, I've got that going on. So just looking at the monitor and do I have like wine up there? Probably. All right, so let's check it out. Hmm. This is good. This is really good. Okay, so it's what the acid is what I wish the acid was with this wine. Oh, I keep looking at the light. It's what look at the green dot. The green light. Um, this is what I wish this wine had with acidity. Um, again, it's not razor sharp acidity, but but it's but it feels like it's contained. Um, I'm, I'm watering it to definitely medium to high uh, acidity, but um, yeah. I would say not as much with the strawberry, um, yeah, as I'm like chilling, yeah, you know, um, not as much with the strawberry, um, a little bit, but um, I don't know, it's one of those wines where I'm kind of like, man, I really like how it tastes. Very light in the tannins, you know, very, very basically non-existent, no, not non-existent, just light, because I do get a bit of dryness on the gums. My initial reaction was, was going to be scoring this a 90. And I think after I'm, I just want to get over the initial, like kind of, I felt like a little bit of wow factor. And that's kind of how I determine whether I'm going to give something a 90 or better. Uh, is there a wow factor? And there is. But again, um, now I get kind of that barbecue kind of sauce, not barbecue, hot sauce type of um, flavoring to it. But it's definitely something that um, uh, is tasty and you've got to pair with food. This is, you know, this is the one you can drink by itself. These two, not so much. Uh, the other thing is, like, when I open this, I, I broke the I broke the cork. I broke the cork. You probably can't tell. Let me have an angle a bit. But it looks like there's, like, some mold on there. You know, I was like, yeah, I got a little mold on here. Um, so, you know, I was like, all right. And I actually had to wipe the bottle down because there was a little bit going here. That actually kind of concerned me a little bit about uh, how – if it was stored right. But um, the wine tastes fine. It's not off. But I, I'll give you my honest opinion. This is the last year that you should drink this wine. <laughs> um, it, otherwise, it's going to start going. I just, I just think it's, I think it's at the tail end of its, of its life. This has, I think, I think this is a, I think this is a better wine. Um, 
flavor wise. I just think the acid's a little bit too flat. This one I had that initial wow and then it just kind of started petering off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give this an eighty six as far as score. I think it's a pretty good wine, but I think it's I think it's, you know, kind of near its end. I think it's gonna start getting worse over the next few years. Um, it's probably a reason why uh, almost all of those wines I found were 2008 and 2009. But um, I, I just don't think, I just don't think it has a structure to continue to be tasting really good beyond this year or, you know, beyond 2012, especially. All right. So um, let's see, we're going to wrap this up. I'm getting close to five o'clock, which is kind of my goal to end um, so I can head over to Wine a Fine Wine Shop over here in San Antonio. That's at Wurzbach and um, – dang it. What's the cross street on that? Oh, I'll have to look it up. Anyway, so I'm going to head over there and uh, – uh, whoops – and uh, do uh, Sissy Barreto's uh, – whatchamacallit um, – Beaujolais tasting. She's also going to hook me up with um, some of my Thanksgiving wines. Uh, Babcock. I, I, for some reason, I didn't think it was Babcock. Anyway, so uh, check out her new wine shop. Uh, she's also the um, – who added me on Google? Oh, look at all you people added me on Google. Um, uh, she's also the uh, person that does the Venicely Speaking uh, wine blog, which I was wearing her shirt, and I was linking below. I'll link it again. Uh, I also put a link to her wine shop. Uh, or at least the, 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 the web website that they have for it. So uh, if you're local, if you're in town, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, looks like I need to increase my exposure real quick. I'm going to, just for the sake of doing this for a little fun, I'm going to do this with my eyeglasses. Now, see, that's pretty cool. Now it looks a little bit better. See, the whiteness is really is. Now, see, here's the problem. On, on, on the monitor, it looks really good, especially for not high def. But then when I look at the Ustream, it doesn't look as good. But, you know, hey, I'll be interested to see what it looks like when I, when I go into it. Oh, I had three likes. Whoo, thank you. All right, so um, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I really thank for the three of you that came in and Stephen for uh, checking in for a little bit on you know, via Skype uh, or via Ustream and contacting me on Skype. I really appreciate uh, all of you uh, stopping in. Um, of course, watching the rest of this for the for the next uh, few days. This is Friday's episode. Um, Monday will be the I think it's the last of the yeah Monday will be the last of the um, the, the the last set of wines that are recorded from France. Then. I'll record on Tuesday the Thanksgiving special. That will last throughout the rest of the weekend. And then on Monday, I'll resume with more of the wines I bought in France. Um, and at some point in time, um, I've got to get uh, Finca de Origin in on a Skype call. Uh, we haven't had a good schedule in the past couple months, so I've still got their wines to Skype with. Uh, and hopefully I'll send all this through to Ustream. And then um, what else do I got? Well, we got Christmas coming up. Uh, 200th episode, which uh, hopefully I'll uh, get with um, – uh, we'll figure something out for 200. I keep promising stuff. The live tasting is not going to happen. It's just there's too much stuff going on in December for me to really do a live tasting somewhere, um, to get the venue set up, you know, a place that's going to be willing to do it, um, and then having to get all the wine ordered and, and, and really promoting it the right way so I can get a good amount of people so it's worth it for the, for the person hosting it to actually make some money. Um, I'm not looking necessarily looking to make money off of it, but you know, it would be nice to get a couple ducats out of the out of what's being charged. But that's that's honestly, I don't care if I make the money. I just want to make sure that I'm at some place that can that can serve the wine, can order the wine, and you just pay them. And I don't care if I get anything out of it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, hmm, the blog. Well, it is a blog, but written stuff. So uh, today I posted, so Thursday, I posted uh, the first part of the trip. So not much really exciting trip-wise to it. It's really just talking about booking my flight, booking my hotel room, and booking my train. And I think that's about it. There might be a couple other things in there, a couple other tidbits. Um, so that's going to be 
mostly weekly. Next week, I might not write anything just because it's Thanksgiving and all that, but um, the, 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 the pre-trip, the pre-trip planning thing is probably is at least two blog posts. Um, I don't think it'll be a third to it. And then after that, it will be effectively each day of the trip. I mean, literally from the day I got on the plane, so just the plane ride, and maybe that, – that's actually two days worth, to be honest. Um, so that, that, that might be one post. And then each day of the trip will be its own post. Um, I messed around with some uh, – uh, what should we call it? Plugins for, for the website. So hopefully I can do, have like maybe a little slideshow for each – blog post as long as the pictures I took though apparently I'm only allowed 30 pictures at once because I don't have a commercial account so I may have to like split up these um, I may have to have multiple galleries on the blog post um, to get around that actually I think I can set it for more than 30 but my my user agreement says I'm not supposed to do more than 30 with Flickr or whatever dude um, let's see I think that's it for those things Christmas coming up New Year's of course you know we'll figure out something for that uh, friend me up, you know, I've got all the links up here, you know, all the social media sites, friend me up there, tell your friends about it, uh, donations, if you want to co contribute to the show, um, definitely take those contributions, and uh, any links below as far as, you know, going to SESI or links for any of these people, um, by the way, this winery's website in English doesn't work, I mean, you get a landing page, but that's it, so you got to know French, I guess, I, I decided not to mess with it, but the French looked like it worked for, Fran for in, in French, and I don't know about Chinese, but there was a China's there was a flag Chinese flag there too. So, um, but I'll have links for everything there. Um, the sun's going down; it's getting darker, but the light is keeping me illuminated. I'm not even using. See, I got this light literally like right there, um, and that's been the light I've been using all this time. So you get that that you get that yellow jaundiced look, and I and I have to go into Final Cut and fix it all. So that's another reason I want to get this light so I don't have to do that. Um, let's see what else. That's going to do it. If you're watching, awesome. If you liked it, which two of you did because I, I was the first one to like it. Um, cool. And uh, we'll see everybody again uh, next week. Thanks for stopping in.